When someone thinks of human space exploration, one subject that almost always comes to mind first is spacewalking. Spacewalking is among the most dangerous and challenging aspects of human space missions, and is typically performed only when necessary. Since the first spacewalks in 1965 to the moonwalks of the Apollo program to the assembly of the International Space Station, one spacesuit design has been used more than any, NASA's extravehicular mobility unit. As we start to learn about this amazing piece of hardware, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you can enjoy even more human spaceflight content in the future. When the crew members on the U.S. side of the International Space Station perform an extravehicular activity, better known as a spacewalk, they use an extravehicular mobility unit, or an EMU. These personal spacecraft have to protect a person from the harsh environment of space, which can range from 120 degrees Celsius in the daylight and minus 150 degrees Celsius in the shadow. The suit must also protect its wearer from small space dust impacts as well as radiation. What might surprise many is that the most important component of NASA's EMU design, the life support backpack, is nearly 40 years old and the space agency has only 11 available to use for the ISS program as of 2019. In the 1970s, NASA contracted with ILC Dover and Collins Aerospace to produce a spacesuit for the space agency's upcoming space shuttle program. Unlike the Apollo suits that were custom fit for each astronaut, the EMUs were designed to be somewhat modular for use up to 15 years. There are two main parts when thinking about spacesuits, the pressure garment system and the primary life support system, or PLIS. The pressure garment system includes pieces such as a helmet, a hard upper torso, elbows, gloves, a waist section, knees, and boots, as well as a variety of padding options, according to NASA. Keeping an astronaut alive for a spacewalk is the job of the PLIS, a backpack-like device that maintains suit pressure, temperature, provides oxygen, and removes carbon dioxide. The baseline suit flew aboard space shuttles starting in 1983 aboard STS-5, although the first spacewalk in the suit wouldn't occur until STS-6. In the lead-up to ISS construction in the late 1990s, additional elements were added, including an emergency jetpack called SAFER, as well as glove heaters and lights and cameras to attach to the helmet. Moreover, the suits on the ISS are designed to be reconfigured in space and remain at the outpost for several years before being returned for refurbishment. The EMUs on the ISS have a mass of about 145 kilograms and have an operating pressure of about 29.6 kilopascals, or about 30% of sea level pressure on Earth. The PLIS backpack can support spacewalks for up to about 8 hours, with 30 minutes of backup life support should an issue occur. In the lead-up to a spacewalk on the ISS, an astronaut works to make sure the suit is configured for their body size. While they are sized on Earth, their body does change in space. There's greater blood flow to the upper part of the body, and the spine can stretch by up to 5 centimeters. Any adjustments to the suit must be done well in advance of a spacewalk, as reconfiguring a suit can take around 12 hours, according to NASA. For a spacewalk based out of the International Space Station's Quest airlock, the crew must first perform a pure oxygen pre-breathe exercise for several hours. This is done to purge nitrogen from the astronaut's blood to prevent the bends, which is a painful condition stemming from dissolved gases, such as nitrogen, from forming bubbles in their blood. When an ISS crew member gets ready to venture outside, they first start by putting on a fancy diaper called a maximum absorbency garment, a thermal control undergarment, and a liquid cooling and ventilation garment. The latter includes clear tubing for chilled water to flow in order to control body temperature. This is followed by donning the EMU, starting with the lower torso unit, which is basically the pants of the spacesuit. This part will already have the required pieces, such as knees and boots, already attached. From there, the hard upper torso, which is kind of like a shirt, is attached and connected via a body seal closure unit. The PLIS backpack is already attached to the upper torso before being donned. After that, the suit is turned on and checked to verify it's working properly. Meanwhile, the astronaut will put on a, what is called a Snoopy cap, which is a fabric garment that goes over the head and hair and has a microphone for communications. Following a communications check, the gloves and helmet are attached and the suit is pressurized. The suit has internal fans and temperature regulators in order to control climate. Much of these can be adjusted by a display and control module on the suit's chest. Once two astronauts are fully suited, they are moved into the crew compartment of the Quest airlock. The hatch is closed and the section depressurized so that the outer hatch can open and the spacewalkers can begin their tasks. Spacewalks are among the most dangerous aspects of any spaceflight. As such, NASA takes extreme precautions to ensure the safety of its crew. No astronaut has ever died while performing a spacewalk. However, that doesn't mean there haven't been issues. According to NASA, in the more than 50 years of spacewalk activity, 20% have had some form of significant incident or close calls, two of which involved excessive water buildup in the suit's helmet, forcing early termination of those spacewalks. 
According to a NASA Office of Inspector General report in 2017, the agency only has 11 of the original 18 plus backpacks still in use. There is usually four at the outpost, so they are periodically rotated via commercial cargo ships and refurbished on the ground. The ISS program also typically has two medium, two large, and two extra large upper torso units in orbit, which can be configured for different astronauts throughout the different crew rotations. New pressure garment pieces are typically procured after an 8 to 10 year life, according to NASA. Since ISS assembly and maintenance began in 1998, more than 220 spacewalks have occurred at the outpost, most of which using the EMU design. Spacewalks from the Russian side of the complex are performed in Russian-built Orlan spacesuits. With the U.S. suits aging and the ISS program likely to continue through 2028, and with human lunar exploration expected to begin within the next five years, NASA is in need of a new suit design. Enter the Exploration Extravehicular Mobility Unit, or XEMU. The XEMU is derived from the EMU, but is expected to have a number of improvements, including more mobility and a PLIS backpack that doubles as a rear entry hatch, a feature that has been used by the Russian space agency since the 1970s. Moreover, the suit is expected to have the ability to be used in microgravity or lunar and Mars environments. The first in-space tests of the XEMU are planned to occur by 2023 aboard the ISS and be ready for the first moonwalks in more than a half century by 2024. While the original EMUs are estimated to have cost between $15 and $22 million in 1974, adjusted for inflation, that'd be around $150 million in 2020, according to Business Insider. While NASA hasn't released a cost estimate for the XEMU design, it's expected to cost even more than that. So what do you think of NASA's EMU design? And did you know that they are 40 years old? Let me know in the comments below what you think, and if you're excited to see the XEMU design utilized later this decade. If you haven't already, please like and share this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and follow Orbital Velocity on Twitter and Facebook. You can also head over to orbital-velocity.com for even more space-related content, including a monthly newsletter called The Space Capsule. Links are in the description below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, at Astra.